Today, I'm gonna to be talking a bit about Just Right OCD. Now, Just Right OCD, which is that feeling of needing it just right, well, all OCD's got an element of that. All OCD's got an element of sort of just right because you're trying to get a feeling right because that's what's going on in the brain. That feeling that's misfiring, that feeling that's being triggered. And when you're getting that experience, you're then trying to get rid of that. You don't want to experience that. So you're trying to match that to turn it off. That's usually what's happening. It's like a game of snap in your mind. And that's particularly the case when people are trying to go backwards into the past to check how they felt at a past point in the past and check how they feel now. And that's trying to match it distinguish that turned on feeling that you've got in the mind. Now with just right OCD, the sort of normal term of just right, it's this feeling of you're always trying to get everything just right. That doesn't mean like tidying up paperwork and getting everything in position like people often think tidiness quirks are to do with OCD. It's in relation to trying to get a feeling of just right. Now it might be doing up your shoes. Uh, getting a feeling of just right on those shoes and then having to redo them and redo them and redo them and redo them just to get that feeling of just right. Uh, it might be with your work trying to do that or a film. It might be replaying a film over and over and over sections because you think you just missed a bit just to get it just right, that feeling in your head, right? That's where just right comes in. And that tidiness quirk you see has, yes, it's different though. It's where people are trying to like sort of got a perfectionist thing where they, again, it's trying to get things in a slight feeling, but nowhere near what is, is what is the case in obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety disorder where it's really jacked up. And you know that when you're in it. And let's go back into the past of my own situation where that was and how bad that was when I was in it. Now, I often talk about the times today where it's all in relation to chronic guilt and chronic anxiety and what I suffered with harm OCD, false memory real event OCD, which was the real sort of internal torturous cycle, which you hear me often talking about on here. But in the early days of the journey, I had a lot of just right. It would be just right with my hair at 15, 16, where I was trying to get my hair just right because I would be going out with my friends. Uh, that started around 14, that, that hair one. And it was like trying to put wax or gel in your hair to get it to look just how you wanted, to look cool. And I thought, if I don't get it just right, then I'll get rejected. And I wasn't even that scared of being rejected, but it just felt like that in the sensation. So there was a just right with trying to get the hair right. Now, let me show you how bad that got. I was spending four hours in the mirror before going out doing my hair because I didn't know I had an anxiety disorder and I thought it was normal. And every time uh, like I would put wax in my hair, I'd look at it in the mirror and then what I would do is I would then watch it and then it would go, the feeling would come in from OCD and it would say, no, nah, that's off. It's, that's really bad, the wrong feeling. And then I'd think, okay, and then I'd put a bit more wax and then it would suddenly do that again. And I'd think, oh no, this is, this, it would not stop. It was like, you know, scratching an itch that's never stopping itching. And so I'd keep doing that, keep doing that. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't settle like that. And I, because OCD steals time, and if you're in compulsive OCD and you know what that's like, it steals time. I didn't know the time that was going past. I thought it was normal. I thought that's what everyone went through to some extent. I knew it was getting a bit out of hand at the end, but hours and hours and hours. Then it went on to other things. Buying shoes. That was the worst. I used to want, dream for a shoe shop that had quarter sizes. And you'd say, what do you mean? because I was scared of the pinching sensation in the shoes where you would feel it pinching and then it wasn't that. It was the fear that I would think of the pinching sensation in the shoes for the rest of the day, all day, and that would ruin the day. And I didn't know that. I just had to accept that maybe it did and, may, and I'd forget about it. And that's actually how I recovered from that in the end because then I thought, fuck it, one day when it was taking ages and ages and I went on and I realised, hey, I haven't actually noticed it that much. The same with knobbly socks, the same with shoes that are too tight or squashed, the same as shirts that are too tight fitting around the neck or around the back. Uh, the sh trousers used to had dread going shopping for them because to try and get the fit right and then did they look too baggy, too tight? And it sounds crazy now when I think of it, when I think, how could I not have seen it? But 
Come on, I understand OCD. I understand exactly what it's like. I can see how that cycle happens and operates like that. But at the time, I couldn't see that. And that was a huge part of my life without even knowing during those teenage years. And that's where it all started, trying to get that feeling of just right. Same with films. I would miss a little bit. So OCD would make me think I'd missed a bit. It would cause a doubt. So I'd think, shit, I've just missed a few seconds of that film. And those are maybe the key parts of the film and I need it and the film will be ruined or I'll be thinking about it for the rest of the film. So I'd rewind, replay, and then it'd go, you've forgotten it. Rewind, replay, rewind, replay. Same with books. Re read that sentence back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, not taking it in. And then it's the fear of not taking it in, the fear of not enjoying it, the fear of the experience being ruined. And that just right like that, you, I, I've seen, you know, I've been working with OCD for 13 odd years. I see just right in far more extremes than what I'm talking about here. Uh, where people are completely fused into that in all areas of their life. And it becomes like that in maze, that mental maze in the head of that situation. All very easy in when you have an understanding of what steps to take to recover. But when you don't and when you can't see that, you stay very much stuck in it and you can't see a way out. Uh, and for me, I'm not... I, I, I mustn't downplay it how bad it was because and I'm certainly not doing that but just to really highlight that you know three four hours doing your hair every day leaving the classroom at school going into the bathroom checking the hair coming back in out back forth back forth uh, shoe shops five six seven hours on the weekends going through trying every shoe 10 20 pairs of shoes socks going through all of them you know just trying them and then 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 thinking about them over and over every single thing in relation to that now obviously then contamination ocd came about and i was spending five six hours in the shower a day and using four to five bottles of shampoo a day and that's when it was really out of hand and i knew it was out of hand there because it got into a harm element if i'm not clean i could pass on a disease and then therefore i should feel guilty forever and then later moving to real event ocd and harm ocd where i was consumed 24 hours a day in my head ruminating chronic guilt uh, self-torturous cycle if you've got OCD you'll know that all too well and then stuck like that for many years so yeah I do know exactly what it's like to be in this position where you're at uh, I would definitely p p put myself in a box of one of the pretty pretty bad cases of uh, severe chronic OCD and I've worked with a lot of cases 20,000 plus over the years of people and um and I can see that when I look at my own journey and how consumed it was and how many rituals and how stuck and morphed and morphed to every single theme you could imagine. And, you know, that's what brought me to doing the work I do today, because I, I, I know very much of that struggle and I know what it feels like and how alone it feels and how you think you're never going to recover and how you think you're the exception. Because I lived like that for years. I didn't even believe I had OCD for years. I was convinced that I was an exception. Mine was real and everyone else was OCD and I wished for their thoughts and not mine. So I know that. I know that journey and what that feels like where you're convinced that you're the you're you're the odd one and and if only that thing hadn't happened in the past then you'd be all right and you know that journey and what that's like I lived that for years and years and years so I'm 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 very aware of of, of what's all involved in that and with just right OCD it's one of those ones that you just need to remind yourself you're trying to check to get that sensation in your head so you need to get used to just wrong you need to get used to not feeling that sensation you need to get used to you need to get used to feeling that discomfort. You need to get used to uh, you. You need to get used to being socially rejected. Even if you were socially rejected, you could accept yourself. You don't need others' approval. Uh, that's a key. Um, that's a key for all these things. Um, and when you start to look at that, what's the core irrational beliefs that are under the surface? For so much of OCD, it's the fear of rejection the fear of being an outcast, the fear of your life collapsing uh, in all ways that you can imagine. And if you just take your time and you learn to break down these irrational beliefs and you learn to change your life philosophies to more rational, helpful beliefs that are going to bring you towards your goals, this is going to lead to recovery. It's not going to happen just by trying to kid yourself. It's just OCD, just OCD. Like is often said, when people don't understand OCD, you've got to make the behavioral shifts. You've got to make the mental shifts by improving your knowledge on how OCD operates, not compulsively, and breaking down what you're scared of and why, most specifically, 
why you're catastrophizing situations and why you're writing yourself off because that lies at the core. So we will be covering that in a lot more detail in these videos. I will be covering that in a lot more detail in these videos. We've done 1,300 plus videos on YouTube, um, one of the channels with the most videos, most free content. But we aim to get it to many thousands because we need to get content out there for people with OCD all over the world stuck with, with these different OCD themes and how to get better because uh, you live at a time now where you can get better. And, um, and so more information about it and the steps to take is key. And so that's why we do the work that we do. Uh, and I'll be next on here covering acceptance in a lot more detail and more about my own journey in detail. Um, and we have a lot of webinars coming up. Um, and if you want to have one-to-one -one sessions with me or any of the rest of my team, just email phil at ocdrecovery.com. So he, Phil organizes all our email inquiries. Uh, so it's if you email him, phil at ocdrecovery.com, uh, he'll get back to you usually in a few hours and um, come along to one of our webinars. Or if you want to come in and see me or any of the guys, yeah, drop us an email and we will be we will try our best to get you in as soon as possible. And I want you to just think about hope along this journey and think you are living at this lucky time to have to be able to recover. People in the past didn't have this possibility. A lot of them were in asylums. A lot of them have, would have had electroshock therapy and all these kinds of things, lobotomies, all the horrors you could imagine. We don't live at a time like that now. And I'm sure in the future, they'll look at this time as the medieval times where they'll say, oh yeah, you're just a laser to the brain or something or some gene spliced out and it's all gone. But we don't live at that time yet, but we live at a time where you can recover. So you can get to a position of a baseline state of peace, the absence of chronic guilt and chronic anxiety. You can do that. And um, that just takes practice. I've done that. It took me a long time to do it because I was so, had so many compulsions and I was stuck in so many ways. But with practice, persistence, improving my knowledge, I got to that position where my long-term state is no chronic guilt, no chronic anxiety, intrusive thoughts have lost their intrusiveness. It's not like that machine gun that I used to feel. Um, and that came about through facing fears and breaking down beliefs by looking at where I was catastrophizing things and thinking, hey, that doesn't make sense. You know, th this would be, this is not going to be as bad an outcome or this even in a bad outcome, it's still not as scary and learning to be less scared of anxiety because I'd become very scared of anxiety having been stuck for so long with that hammering away and then learning to see, hey, it's not so scary like that. And, uh, and bit by bit by bit that came together and with a lot of setbacks along the way and transitions uh, to this position now. And, uh, you know, I feel miles away from that version of me before. And, um, you know, I've, I've, I, I look back now and I think, well, why don't I have setbacks today? Well, I'm particularly around OCD a lot, so I see it and see my rational thinking, a rational thinking if it's coming up. And so I'm pretty aware of that and do the things necessary and looking at things and think, oh, I'm getting a bit catastrophizing here or a bit overly concerned here, well, overly becoming worried here on something. And so you can, I can tune it back. Uh, that doesn't mean that I wouldn't get scared if I had a health scare right now. Doctor says you've got some results come back, but I would think, shit, that's not good. And I might feel anxious in that moment for sure. But I'm pretty sure with the tools I have, I would calm myself back down because I have been in many difficult life circumstances in the last decade. And I have done that. I have managed to adapt to that. And so I genuinely feel calm and not really worried. And people who know me and work with me I would describe me as someone who's the sort of calmest and least worried about anything. And I genuinely feel like that. And that was the goal. But if you'd seen me before, uh, well, I was the most worried and the most asking for reassurance and going to the doctors twice a week, all year round. And like, yeah. If you just read any of the posts or watch any of the videos, you'll see the extent of where OCD had got for me. OCD had got for me. So yeah, uh, today I'm very grateful to be in this position, um, and it feels like being in the position before I had OCD, but a more empowered version of myself today. Uh, so I feel exactly as I did before chronic OCD started. But I had chronic OCD, not chronic OCD, but I had OCD in lots of different forms since a child, uh, but not the chronic form until I was about 16, 17. Um, so yeah, you've got to think. You've got a great position today to live in a time where you can change your thinking, change your beliefs, and you can recover. So go for it, persistence, practice, 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 and you will get there.